It's that time of year again, folks. It's Battlefield beta time. We had one for Battlefield 4, we had one for Hardline, we had one for Star Wars Battlefront. We seem to have one for pretty much every EA title that releases at the minute, uh, but now it's finally time for Battlefield 1's turn. You might remember we had the closed alpha a few months ago, but that was for only for a few select people who managed to get into the Battlefield Insiders program. Well now, the open beta is coming to everybody, every single platform, every single person who has a EA Origin account will get access to the open beta. You can just download it from your respective store. So in this video, I thought I would go over everything that we will get to see in the open beta for Battlefield 1. The first thing that you will obviously need to know is that it starts on August the 31st, but if you are a member of the Battlefield Insider program, you will gain one day early access. Now you can do that by going to the link in the description below. That'll take you to the Battlefield Insider sign up page. It might be a little bit too late, I'm not quite sure since the beta does start tomorrow for early access people, but you can give it a go anyway. Uh, but if you are a member of the Battlefield Insiders program, you will gain 24 hours early access to it on August the 30th. The maps that we're going to be able to play on in the open beta is St. Quentin's Scar. I still can't get my mouth around that. St. Quentin's Scar, that's how you say it. That's what we saw in the closed alpha last time. Getting a little bit old now since the, you know, we put like, I kind of put 40 hours into it and it's kind of getting a little bit stale, but we also have the Sinai Desert, which is the desert map that we've seen from the Gamescom trailer. That's set in the deserts of Arabia. We're going to get to play as the Ottoman Empire and the British forces. We've seen it in the Gamescom trailer and from the videos that the game changed changes have released in the past couple of days. It's looking very pretty and quite promising in terms of gameplay, so it seems to have a good mix of close quarters and long range combat as well as vertical gameplay. That was something that surprised me, that it looks like there's a little canyon bit where you can climb on top of some of the high rocks and get some pretty good sniper purchase from up there, so I'm very very excited to see how the gameplay pans out on that map. In terms of game modes, we're going to be getting Conquest Large, that will be returning again from the Alpha, as well as my personal favourite mode, Rush. Rush is making a return, surprisingly, although I thought that Operations was meant to replace this, as I detailed in this video here, but no, DICE says that Rush is here to stay, so I'm not complaining, I'm a big lover of Rush. Unfortunately, we're not going to get any game mode specific maps, but early gameplay does look to be quite promising. The player count has also been limited to 24 players to avoid overcrowding, clustering and choke points, so these are very good early signs for the game mode. We know it's had a bit of trouble in the past few iterations of the game, it's never quite hit the high point that it had back in Bad Company 2, but hopefully we could be starting to see Rush on the rise again. In terms of weapons, we're going to get access to the Selb Slader M1916 for the Medic class. I'm sorry, I'm, I probably butchered that name. Uh, this is a semi-automatic rifle. It looks pretty satisfying to use, and it comes in a couple of different variants, just like the other weapons that we saw in the Alpha. In fact, all of these weapons that I'm about to talk about here do have the different variants, depending on what sort of situation you want to go to. The MG15 LMG will be available for the support class. That's the one that we got to see in the Gamescom trailer. And the Gewehr M95 Sniper makes an appearance as well. I imagine that'll be quite popular since sniping in Battlefield 1 has quickly become one of the more popular ways to play. Dynamite is in the build too, so veterans can finally get their C4 fix that they were missing from the Alpha. I'm assuming that all of the weapons featured in the Alpha will make their way to the Beta 2, so there should be a fair amount of weapons to choose from. Looking at the different vehicles available in the Beta, we are going to get our first look at the artillery truck that has a mounted machine gun and an artillery cannon attached to it. The new transport vehicle will be in there as well, that's basically the Jeep equivalent of what we see in Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3. It's got three seats, but it's easily susceptible to well-placed light arms fire. Of course, we're also getting our horse debut. This is actually a little bit of a bigger aspect than you might think. It's not just a hop-in, hop-out vehicle like you would imagine it to be. Spawning on a horse spawns you with the cavalry class. Now, this gives you a rifle for a primary weapon and a sword or a saber as a secondary weapon. You can also drop health and ammo packs as you go, which is a useful addition to encourage team play, and two anti-tank grenades also come as standard to help you warn off heavy armour. Jagfrags actually published a video with horse gameplay backed up by the new Battlefield 1 theme that you heard at the start of this video, and it has to be one of the most epic trouser tingling videos that I've seen in a long, long while, so I'll link it down below, I highly recommend you give it a watch. Horses are something that I'm really looking forward to playing with, and I'm hoping it's not going to be too underpowered. I mean, obviously sitting on a horse makes you a pretty large target, so we're going to have to wait and see how they actually play out. But my fingers are crossed that they're pretty fun to use. 
We're also getting a look at the Elite Classes. Now, this is going to be our first look at Elite Classes. Of course, we saw them detailed a little bit in the Gamescom trailer. And when I first heard about these, I was actually on holiday, so I didn't do a lot of research into it. But I was pretty skeptical about the general concept. I wasn't overly confident about the balancing. It kind of seemed a little bit gimmicky and something that I didn't think would suit the franchise. Now, we weren't actually sure of how these Elite Classes were going to be acquired. Thought maybe similar to the Behemoths, where the losing team gains access to them to give them a little bit of a small boost but it's actually kind of similar to how battle pickups work in Battlefield 4 and Hardline, like the M320 and the USAS shotgun. They can be picked up by anybody on either team at specific locations, and when you pick them up you acquire a new skill set and have to adopt a new playstyle. The flamethrower guy does massive damage up close, but is susceptible to long range fire. He moves very slowly and has impaired vision due to the permanent gas mask. The sentry also does massive damage at close range with his water cooled machine gun, but he can't ADS so hitting medium target is a big challenge. He is very susceptible to gas and incendiary grenades because he isn't wearing any gas mask. The Tank Hunter class wields a very high powered rifle that's intended for armoured targets. His big weakness is that he must be prone and still to fire it, so he's easily susceptible to any range of fire as he's not going to be moving when he's taking any of his shots. The Flame Trooper and Sentry are going to be the most popular elite classes I think, but I think we'll let the community decide that once they get their hands on the build of the game. We're also getting access to a new behemoth. You might have seen the train behemoth in the first and the Gamescom trailer as well. This is going to be playable and it's something that's intrigued many people ever since they first saw it in the trailers. Movement is fully controllable forwards and backwards along the track and the track actually passes at least two capture points on the map so it's going to be useful when trying to capture those specific points. It's pretty useless for the other ones though. It doesn't look to be too OP from the initial gameplay that we've seen, but we're going to have to wait and see whether this rings true in live public testing. Now, one of the things that I'm most excited about for Battlefield 1 might seem a little bit small in comparison to the everything else that is included in Battlefield 1, but it's actually the new UI. This is our very first look at the new unified UI for Battlefield. It's a new alternative or replacement, I'm not actually quite sure whether it's an alternative or a replacement yet, for Battle Log. Now the concept is that it's one unified UI that launches Battlefield 1, Battlefield 4 and even Battlefield Hardline all within the same application. You'll be able to see your in-game stats, you'll be able to create squads and browse servers all from in all from within this one application meaning that you'll no longer have to open and close an application every time you switch server or even game now as Battlefield 1, Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline will all launch simultaneously from the one unified launcher. Nothing new for us alpha folks but it's great for everyone else that will now be able to get their hands on it. It's unlikely that it'll actually work with Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline for the beta but that functionality is aimed to be implemented by launch or soon thereafter. So there you go, that's pretty much everything that we are going to be able to play with in the open beta of Battlefield 1. Let me know down in the comments whether you are excited for the beta, I know I personally cannot wait for this beta, it's something that ever since the closed alpha has finished I've just been wanting to get my hands on more Battlefield 1, it's just really really addictive and I can't wait for everybody else to finally get their hands on it so that I can finally play some proper games with some friends and get some good teamwork going. I just quickly want to apologise for my inactivity over the last week, I know whenever I say that I'm getting back on the saddle after a long period of inactivity I always say yeah I'm really driven and I'm really going to make an effort this time, the reason that I've not been active in the last week is that I was actually involved in a little bit of a, a, a bad car crash. Now, I'm fine, everybody in the car crash was fine. Uh, the only injury that I have is that I got some pretty bad whiplash, so my neck is currently pretty strained unless when I'm not on uh, a healthy diet of painkillers and it, it tends to be fine when I'm sitting down not doing anything but then as soon as I start to sort of not take my painkillers or I start to do some pretty vigorous work it, it starts to get really quite painful so that's the reason why I've not been uploading and been not, not been active uh, for the past week on this YouTube channel and that's because I've pretty much been recovering I've not really been in the mental state to uh, record and script videos so I hope you can appreciate why I haven't been active. Hopefully, uh, my free time over the next couple of weeks is starting to become more and more uh, available, if you get what I mean. I'm, I'm getting a lot more free time as I'm not doing as much overtime at work. Uh, so hopefully, we're going to be able to continue this hype ball that this channel has generated rolling. And again, I owe all of that to you guys. But anyway, I've talked enough for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. And I shall catch you in the next one.